Welcome back to the world of Dagami. It's been quite some time since my last post, but I'm still here and extremely thrilled about this project. They have just released the white paper and there have been significant changes. So let's dive in and explore what we can learn from it. The white paper begins by unveiling the backstory and lore behind Dagami. It reveals that Dagami are extraordinary mystical creatures with exceptional powers. They have been adopted by humanity and it is our responsibility to train them in the Dagami academies. We're going to be awakening their abilities and preparing them for the inevitable return of the forces of darkness. Let's dive into the start of the Dagami Academy. Up until now, the only interaction we've had with our Dagami is through the Doga house where we could do basic activities like feeding and petting them. But now the awakening process begins, which is broken down into three phases. Phase one is called the dormant phase, which is where you'll begin the process of awakening your Dagami. This will occur from levels one through 19. During this phase, you won't be able to breed your Dagami, but you can earn Doga. Now, once you reach level 20, you will be in the awoken phase and you can earn Doga and also breeding becomes available. So I'm assuming this means this is the adult phase. This is also where we may start to see some of the unique powers of the Dagami come into play, hence the name Awoken. Finally, at level 50, you'll enter the spirit phase. In this phase, you can breed your Dagami, but you cannot earn Doga except for specific events that offer significant rewards. Regarding the breeding process, they're still rethinking how it will work, but it will still require a male and female and incest won't be allowed. There will also be limits on the number of Dagami you can breed so that the population doesn't get out of control. Let's explore some of the exciting new information in the white paper and try to decipher its meaning. The new skills of your Dagami are as follows. Number one, velocity. This skill relates to the speed of your Dagami's running and overall movement. Number two is swim. This skill determines how fast your Dagami can swim and its proficiency in diving. Next is jump. The jump skill measures your Dagami's ability to leap both in terms of height and distance. Then we have balance and this skill pertains to your Dagami's stability and dexterity. I suspect it will play a significant role for breeds like French Bulldogs who are known for their skateboarding skills. Number five is strength. Strength is utilized for tasks such as climbing, pulling, and breaking objects. Then number six, instinct. This skill is intriguing because it introduces a new dimension. Initially, we had only five stats, but now with instinct, we have six skills. It is specifically associated with supernatural powers. So let's delve into the understanding of the skills. The skills have two aspects, the level and the rank. Levels range from one to a hundred and you will progress through numerous levels. It's important not to confuse these levels with the Dagami levels, which is earned through XP, which only goes up to level 50. On the other hand, ranks are a bit different. They are categorized into six different letters with S representing the superior rank. Following S, the next best ranks are A, B, C, D, and the lowest rank is E. Now, understanding ranks can be a little confusing, but let me simplify it for you. Each dog breed will have a predetermined profile that assigns ranks to each of these skills. Now, they are collaborating with dog experts to make it more realistic, while also working with game designers to ensure fairness. This suggests that ranks may not perfectly mirror real life abilities. And this is particularly beneficial for breeds like Chihuahuas as they would otherwise have the worst rank in every category. So they may need to make some adjustments to give Chihuahuas a chance to achieve something above last place. Let's examine the example they provided in the white paper. And for the sake of simplicity, let's assume it represents a Greyhound although it doesn't because they're bad swimmers and this puts swimming pretty high. In this example, the Greyhound has an A rank for velocity, a B rank for swim, a C rank for both jump and balance, a D rank for strength, and an E rank for instinct. 
These starting ranks apply to all Greyhounds, but each individual Dagami may have slight variations. This is where the rarity tier of your Dagami comes into play, giving you an advantage. If you have a bronze tier Dagami, two of its skills will randomly receive one rank boost. For example, your Greyhound could see its velocity boosted from A to the highest rank of S and its swim skill boosted from B to an A. Alternatively, it could have its instinct boosted from a bottom rank of E to a D and its strength boosted from a D to a C. There are numerous potential combinations. If you have a silver tiered Dagami, three of its rankings will be upgraded by one rank. With a gold tiered Dagami, four of the rankings will be upgraded as shown in the provided example. And if you have a diamond tiered Dagami, every skill except one will receive a boost. Now, the question arises, how does a higher rank skill help? Looking at the chart, we can see how different rankings will impact the skill levels. If a skill has an S rank, it will start at either level 11 or 12 and can progress all the way up to level 100. However, if the rank is E, the skill will start at level 1 or 2 and can only reach a maximum level of 50. Now let's consider our Greyhound example. With a high velocity rank of S, they would excel in speed events with flat courses and no obstacles. However, when it comes to challenges involving climbing mountains or moving boulders, their lower strength rank would pose a disadvantage. Additionally, you will earn bonus skill points through basic training activities within the game. Skill points are essential for advancing to higher levels. The connection between rank and skill points makes sense though. If a skill has an E rank and only needs to reach level 50, it will require less time to reach its maximum level. On the other hand, a skill with an S rank must progress all the way to level 100, so having a boost in skill points will assist in reaching that milestone more quickly. Hopefully that makes more sense now about the skills. Let's explore the recently introduced feature known as talents. Now, I've seen some people in the chat a little upset that they are no longer calling them body attributes, but I think these are very similar the more that I look at it. For example, in the old white paper, one possible attribute was broad shoulders, which could now be a talent that is incorporated into the strength skill for climbers. In truth, the concept of body attributes in the old white paper was often confusing due to some contradictory information. This new approach might simplify things by providing clearer guidelines. Now let's delve into the current information provided. Primarily, it appears that talents serve the purpose of granting bonuses for earning skill points. Ultimately, these bonuses aim to expedite your progress, enabling you to perform better in races sooner and consequently, increasing your chances of earning Doga. According to the white paper, there are six types of talents, each corresponding to a specific skill. Additionally, talents are categorized into five levels of rarity, common, uncommon, rare, epic, and legendary. And your Dagami will be assigned three and only three talents, which means only three of your skills will get a talent. Now, the rarity tier of your Dagami will provide an advantage by guaranteeing a certain rarity for one of its three talents. For instance, a bronze Dagami will have one uncommon talent, which is better than the common. A silver Dagami will have one rare talent, which is better than uncommon. And a gold Dagami will have one epic talent, and a diamond Dagami will have one legendary talent. However, the remaining two talents can have any rarity. In theory, it is possible to have a stroke of luck where a bronze Dagami ends up with two legendary talents in addition to the guaranteed uncommon talent. Conversely, a diamond Dagami may have the guaranteed legendary talent while the other two talents are just common. Furthermore, since only three skills will receive a talent, this means that you could obtain a legendary talent for a skill ranked as S or a legendary talent for a skill ranked as E. Additionally, three of your skills, remember, will not receive any talents. Now, it's worth noting the specific names of these talents have not been disclosed yet, and they will give us that information as the game develops. Now, let's go back to the example of the Greyhound again. 
it is possible for your Greyhound to receive an upgrade from a rank A skill to a rank S skill, along with obtaining a legendary talent for that rank S skill. This would result in a 150% skill bonus for the rank S skill, as well as a 50% bonus from the legendary talent. All right, now we haven't discussed several aspects of the game yet, such as where do you earn these skill points? The inclusion of relics and consumables, the exhibition races, the time trials, the 3D map adventure mode, the presence and purpose of in-game soft currency, the upcoming first comic book and its title, and a few other details. But for that information, you'll have to check out part two of this video. Don't forget to check out part two of the video and we'll see you next time.